It's Monday morning, April 20th, and we're ready to get started with another week. Been trying to figure out what we want to do for the next week. And then yesterday we were on a uh, Zoom call, whatever, with uh, Sunday School. <clears throat> and it was talking about prayer. And something I've been wanting to do for a, a good while, never have done it specifically, but to take a little time in looking at something that's very, very familiar to us, something called the Lord's Prayer, or the Model Prayer, or the Disciples' Prayer, however you want to uh, call it. But if you've been around church for any length of time, you have done, used this prayer corporately, individually, you've uh, heard it being done many times. And... Um, it's a prayer of obviously that Jesus taught his disciples. It's during the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, when he uh, <clears throat> is speaking to his disciples about the subject of prayer. Subject of prayer is very obviously very essential in uh, our relationship with God because it is communication. And if we're not communicating well, well, you know how it is. If you're talking with someone and they're not understanding you or they're not tracking with you or you're not understanding them, you may be talking, but you're not communicating. So I think this prayer is a, is a great tool for us to take a look at, take some time to look at. And we're just going to break it down little by little. Um, and I'm just thinking along with you I don't have any notes, or I've just been thinking some uh, uh, some thoughts. And one of the things about that is tomorrow I'll say, "Oh, I should have said this." <laughs> you know, that's the way it kind of goes sometimes. But I think it's good to be able to just think. And I hope that <clears throat> if I bring up some things today, you, it will it will spark some thoughts in your mind as well, because I do think the greatest thoughts we can think are the thoughts we think about our Heavenly Father, which is how this starts out. So let's begin. Our Father who art in heaven, or as a, the Christian Standard Bible, uh, our Father in heaven. So let's, let's start there, our Father. First of all, you have to understand uh, we're, we're very accustomed to hearing this, so it's no big deal. But for Jesus to say this in first century Israel, it was almost scandalous to say this. If you go back in the Old Testament, very rarely do you see the term father being applied to God. God's name was so revered and so feared, uh, they would not consider it to be a uh, something so familiar as a father. There are a few times, but it's usually about the father of the nation. Kind of like, um, and, and God can, can be looked as father of uh, humanity. Kind of like for, uh, Ford is the, uh, what's, what's the guy's name? Henry Ford was the father of the modern automobile. But that doesn't make him a, his children. You understand that. And so God creates us, but that doesn't mean he is our father. He's our originator, certainly. A father implies very clearly a relationship. And so Jesus, it would make sense for Jesus to say, my father, <coughs> because there was already a relationship there. Jesus, the son of God, the perfect Son of God, in the flesh, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, here is, here is Jesus, and he's, he says, my Father, but notice what he says. Our Father. What's the implication? The implication is that we can also have a relationship with God that we relate to him as a Father, and he to us is his children. Now, that's, that is radical. You need to understand that. That's a radical understanding of God because 
we certainly know the power, the awesomeness, the, the holy otherness of God, and yet Jesus has the temerity to say, Our Father. Now, I want you to notice something else about that. It's very striking. Is that we should never have that claim. Why? Because in the garden, we were disqualified. Sin broke us from a relationship with God. It's interesting, and as I'm just, just sitting here thinking about it, it struck me. Isn't it interesting that Adam does not call God Father. The only way that we can experience God as Father, and it's greater than Adam, and I want you to understand this, Adam, Garden of Eden, wonderful, but heaven is going to be far greater. Adam did not call him Father, maybe because he could not. Because to be his father had to be his son. And the only way that we can be the children of God is through the Son of God. We become grafted in. We become joint heirs. We become the children of God because the Son of God died in our place, which we then become by faith the children of God. Wow. Do you begin to see some of the privilege here? That is, it's just astonishing when you stop to think about it. We, we did nothing to earn that position of father and, ch and child. In fact, Jesus in his high priestly prayer in John 17 said, love them even as you have loved me. That means when he sees Jesus and he loves him completely and he says, this is my beloved son. He looks at us and he says, this is my beloved child. Now that's amazing. That's amazing. And, and I know one of, the, one of the struggles I think that, thankfully I don't have, but, but you may, is relating to, to God as a father because your father was not, it was not a good thing. Maybe you did not have a good relationship. Maybe you had an abusive father. Maybe you had an absent father. Maybe you had a, a situation your father wasn't even there. You don't even know who your father was. And relating to God as father is, is difficult because you don't relate to your earthly father. But I want you to know that God places within us a desire to have that kind of a deep abiding relationship with a father. If you can think about the ideal father, that is God and infinitely more. And here we have God and the son. And every time we see the son and God speaks, it is, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is someone that that God loves with an everlasting love. And yet, on the cross, he breaks that love and he breaks that relationship. Why? So that you and I might become the children of God. You begin to see the sacrifice of the Father? The Father's heart is broken so that, his, so that we could be whole with him. It's just, it, when we when we speak, Speak, our Father. Don't let that become so commonplace that it means little to you. I want you, I want you to look at this prayer when Jesus says, "Our Father." Do you understand the love that Jesus has for the Father? It's constant and and, and abiding and powerful. And He is not holding on to it, grasping to it, but He's He's saying, "Let me open this to." Our Father. John says in 1 John, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. 
I hope today you will be amazed at the relationship that you have with the Father. And did you see this? Our Father who art in heaven? I, I, I think one of the things he, he points out here is God is, is holy other. He's in heaven. We're not. And yet he loves us. He doesn't have to, but out of his great love he does. He chooses to. And even if he's in heaven, he's also our father. So that means he's transcendent and he's imminent. He's beyond us and he is with us at the very same time. And if he is our father, that means he loves us and accepts us always. That means he knows you, as I used to have a pastor say, he knows you warts and all. You know, your, your parents, especially when you're growing up time, knew you better than yourself, didn't they? They knew your thoughts, your inclinations, they knew your weaknesses, and they still loved you. You know, one of the things, I had a great relationship with my, my mom and dad. And if I disappointed them, they would tell me they dis I disappointed them, but they never stopped loving me. Listen, you need to know that your relationship is so secure not as just somebody who is an approver or a director or a saver, but a father, so that when you blow it, you know that you are loved regardless of what you have done. So that means that you can fess up and confess what you've done immediately because you know your love is not based upon your performance, but your love is based upon your relationship and that relationship is a father to a child. Now, if you are a father or a mother yourself, you know what I'm talking about. There is no deeper relationship than that, ch that child of yours. And you love them completely. Imperfect, maybe even disappointing, but you love them. And you'll go to any length to help them. And that's exactly what our Father did. Because He loves us, He went to the greatest length to save us and protect us and redeem us in Jesus. In Jesus, our brother, the good elder brother, went out, sought us, and gave Himself for us willingly. You see what kind of family you're a part of? You get this? God our Father, Jesus our brother, welcome to the family. I hope you have a great day today and just think about great thoughts about the Father today. Our Father who art in heaven. We'll pick it up tomorrow in the next phrase. Have a great day.